Hello everybody and welcome to Arganian's Puzzle Box. As of late, I've been working on a new project for Unreal Engine for my Patreons. It's basically called the Surface Forge and it's a project that will allow us to create material layers for our meshes inside Unreal and it's going to heavily emphasize using displacement maps. Now one issue with displacement maps is that they cause a lot of texture stretching when you're actually using them to displace the geometry of let's say a ground plane or a wall or something like that there's a lot of stretching that can go around there's a lot of spikes that can come out of the texture when you're using your displacement uh, uh, you know values and this tutorial today is going to address that by showing you a few methods well two methods mainly of how to deal with these texture spikes that are causing your displacement to look all wrong this tutorial emphasizes on the steps that you need to take which applies to most textures some of them don't have the issue at all some of them have you know, horrendous issues when it comes to this. So you want to get an, a, a nice, clean result as much as possible. Obviously, it's also depending on the geometry that you, you have for your mesh that you're going to displace. But predominantly, it all boils down to how good the displacement texture is. One major tip for you. When you export displacement textures out of, uh, um, you know, Substance Painter, I would strongly recommend that you use the EXR um, format for it and also use 16 bits. Now, you can do whatever you want, but your mileage may vary. I find 16 bits EXR best format for displacement. So let's begin the tutorial. So we start our process in Substance Painter. And what I've got here is a very basic plane that I'm going to use as a canvas. Onto this canvas, I'm going to add this material, which is a concrete, construction concrete and rebar material. It's a very good material to, uh, you know, showcase this because it has these bars that are, should be going upwards. And then it has also this concrete that's on top of the bars. So a very good uh, overall texture for us to play around. Now we can see over here, we do actually have our height enable for it. And I'm also going to enable the normal so it gives us a bit more detail. But obviously, even with the height turned on, we can't see the rebar uh, going up or any of the textures so it's all completely flat so the first thing we want to do in substance painter is go over here to the shader settings and then over into the displacement and tessellation which is all the way at the bottom you want to start increasing the scale of this and what you'll notice is that we're still not seeing any sort of disruption in the in the um, aspect of the plane so we need to increase our subdivision count all the way you know crank it up to the maximum now this looks horrible so this is basically the first uh, part of why you know how to fix texture stretching and also how to have defined um, sort of displacement that you can generate out of Substance Painter. If the mesh is not adequate, like this one, which is just a plane with basically one face, then you're never going to get a good effect. So you must your your underlying geometry has to have some basic uh, you know some basic geometry underneath, some basic um, amount of, um, of of subdivision in order for this to work. So I'm going to go into Blender over here, and this is the same plane. I'm going to go into Edit Mode and then just subdivide. And I want to do this a couple of times. So we may want to maybe, you know, for me, I've done it probably about five times. That's probably about right. But you could, you know, go a bit further if you want. Just bear in mind, the more you do this, the, you know, your, 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 your resulting mesh that you're going to use on the other side for that particular particular texture should have a subdivision level that's adequate as I said for you to get a nice displacement. So now I'm going to export this plane and re-import it in Substance Painter so we can see what it looks like after we've done this step. So let's talk about the first solution now that we're back in Substance Painter. I'm going to go over to edit and then re-import mesh which will bring that plane back in and now we can see that the new uh, you know obviously the texture is now properly displacing according to this height map. But it looks ridiculously tall and obviously has a lot of spikes and a lot of issues and a lot of texture stretching that I was mentioning before. So we've got to fix all of this and this is where the solution that I have in place will come in handy. Now obviously we can decrease the height amount. It's maybe a bit too much at 0.07. So we're going to put it to about 0.03 which already kind of resolves some of the issue. Basically you don't want your displacement to be way too uh, you know you're way too high because you're going to get stretching at some point regardless but with my solution you're still going to mitigate that quite a lot and still get a very nice height uh, detail also you might want to change from uniform to edge length if this is going to give you better results but your mileage may vary depending on the mesh that you are going to use obviously edge length 
adds even more subdivisions than uniform but as i said both of these don't matter because your resulting software that's going to use this is going to have its own pipeline to allow for displacement to work on meshes anyway so i'm um, i'm now going to start applying the fix so the first thing i want to do is for this construction embedded concrete rebar we can actually right click it and add a filter and in this filter we can look for something like blur which this blur as you can see is blurring the entire texture but you could tell it to only blur the metal color roughness and normal which will then only blur that instead of blurring everything else so you're still getting a very nice crisp texture and you've already mitigated the effect of you know of these um uh, this texture stretching so this is before and this is after uh, we can also add another filter and this one we can actually look for a clamp and this is going to allow us to effectively control how we, you know how uh, the displacement reacts so for example we can bring the floor up of the displacement or we could bring the top of the displacement down so if you want to again clamp it at the top this could be very useful indeed if you want to play with that but if we leave it to zero and one then obviously the clamp will have no real effect because the entire range of the displacement is being uh, affected but just making sh make sure that you do deactivate the all of these and just leave the height only because you may only want to affect the height and not the colors or the normals or anything like that this could be specifically very useful depending on what type of displacement you're going for and the last bit that i usually add here is another filter which is a sharpen filter and this is done across the board um, i might not be sharpening my height and i might not be sharpening my normal but you know this could help to sell the uh, texture a bit more but these all of these all these solutions are quite simple but they're not the full solution there is something else that we could do so i'm just going to disable all these filters that i've added and go back to the original texture what i want to do now is actually work with a different layer that's going to help me compound this stretching that we're seeing here and gives us give us more control over what we're doing now let's use a more advanced solution that's going to give us more control and just overall a better result the first thing we want to do is we want to right click our material and create an anchor point then we want to press the add a fill layer button and we only want to change the height information for this fill layer nothing else now switch over normally you'll be on base color up here switch the layers over to height and then change the blend mode to pass through now that that's done we can right click it and then we can add a black mask in the black mask we can right click and add a new fill so you'll be able to see it here add fill and in the add fill we can uh, you know click this grayscale over here and go to anchor points and click on the anchor point that we created earlier now make sure that the reference channel is going to be height like that and this will allow us to now control the height through this fill layer which is very very nice we can actually right click it and add a new filter over here and this filter we can search for a blur and we're just going to select the normal blur like that and now we want to only affect the height as before because that's the only thing that we want to change with this blur effect and as you can see this blur is now affecting the layer underneath but obviously we want it only to affect the sloped areas where the texture is stretching now we've got to tell our mask what to affect from our texture specifically so we're going to click on the mask again right click it and add a new filter and then in here we want to search for an outliner so just type in outline and you should be able to see the mask outliner so if you select that it will then allow us to now to you know pretty much select what we want to affect from these patches so if we switch back over to the height information over here we'll be able to kind of see a little bit what the mask is doing so i can just try a little bit and increase this um, i'm going to well effectively i want to be you know you're not probably not going to be able to see that much on uh, on the youtube uh, page but i'm sure if you're following along you'll be able to see exactly what the change is going to be so i'm just going to go back into the material and what we want to do now is we want to decrease this well sorry increase the threshold a little bit you can see how each of these specs here are being affected but we also want to change either from outside to the inside or both it really depends on your texture that you're going to be using so I, I would just say play around until you get the, uh, the nice result now we're going to also increase the blur a little bit here just to bring these spikes a bit further down 
and then I'm going to click the material, go to blur and increase our blur intensity a bit more. So now you can see that we're having a far better result on the displacement than what we had. We still can see these areas here that are not very nice, you know, this coloring. So for me to fix that, I'm just going to increase the, you know, um, basically adjust or enable the blur that we used in the previous step. And this is going to allow us to further refine this. So you don't want to have it too high, but just a little bit until that just decreases that sort of stretching there in between as well. So between these two settings, the one here at the top and the blur here that we just um, enabled, this is going to give us the best result that we can get for displacement in general. And obviously now if you go into the displacement setting in here, we can increase this even further. You can see there now. Um, and it's not creating as many issues as it did before, just having it raw. And if you don't believe me, then you can always disable this layer here at the top and then this blur here. And this is what this displacement looked like when you first applied it. Now, how do you get this entire setup across to another material? Well, let's just do that straight away because it's very simple. First, let's enable all of our um, layers again in the way that we used it. And I'm going to add a new layer over here. So let's try this corrupted, whatever, texture corrupted lava rock. Okay. And I can then, you know, actually I should disable everything underneath it. There we have it. And it's got displacement as well, which is not too bad already. Uh, maybe this is not the best example. Um, maybe we need something a bit more realistic, but you know, Let's just try it out. Yeah, there's no stretching in this particular material. I think the displacement, the, the height information is just too nicely uh, worked. As you can see there, there's just a very, very nice um, contrast. So we might want to look for a different kind of material. Uh, let me try this alien rock, maybe. Let's see what the displacement looks like this, because obviously we're trying to fix um, sort of like stretching, not fix areas where there is no stretching. So I'm just going to go to the material of this one and we're going to enable the height so that we can actually see height information. It's this one is not too bad either. So there's not that much texture stretching going on, but let's just try and push the height settings in here. And as you can see, this is a really, really good displacement map because there's absolutely no stretching going on. I love it. Uh, so I'm sure if we switch over to height over here, yeah, very interesting. But if we really want to push this, we can always add a level over here and switch over to height. And now with the uh, histogram, we can actually, you know, we can actually bring um, this a bit forward and, and it actually increase the height like that. So we might be able to start seeing some stretching. So there isn't, it's not impossible to start getting stretching in every other texture, by the way. This is just me saying that there are textures that could be done very, very nicely and you won't really have any issues. Uh, but there are also textures that are just not going to be possible. Um, let me just look for another example. Maybe, uh, maybe something like this one here. Uh, this particular sandstone might have an issue because it will have holes in it, uh, most likely. So again, let's just enable height and see what that looks like. And as you can see, there is some stretching going on right there, but it could also be because we've pushed displacement very high. So let's just decrease it. Yeah, see this one is a, it's pretty good. There is a bit of stretching. So let's try and fix that now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to copy this layer and put it above the other layer. I'm going to click our colorful sandstone material and right click it and then add an anchor point. I then want to go over here into our fill and change the anchor point to the new one, which is the colorful desert sandstone. And then we also want to make sure that we change from base color to height over here. And now we, well, we're going to enable this layer. Uh, we're going to leave the settings as they were, but I am going to add a new filter here onto the sandstone material and then add a blur because I find that that blur really does help to have it underneath as well. Uh, let me just select it. Uh, obviously, only do the blur for the height, nothing else. And there you have it. Now we have a displaced texture that is not stretching too badly and it actually looks quite nice. So you can see we've really pushed it a lot here and there's not that many issues to speak of. It actually looks as if it's full geometry instead of being just a texture that's done it.
Now, one very neat trick in order to not have to reproduce all the nodes whenever you want to change to a new texture and you don't care about the one that you've done before, you can just simply drag the material over into the slot of the material that you've changed. So this will effectively add all the, you know, will keep everything else, all the other layers intact, but it will obviously now work with the new layer that you just added in. So you can do this for anything like, for example, you know, right now I'm dropping this uh, volcanic rock here. As long as we enable the height information, then we're going to be good to go. So anything could be done this way. You can just simply overwrite the material that you've used before. So as I said, I can pick any one of these. And when you actually, when you click it, it will automatically do it anyway. So you can see here, I'm just simply adding extra, you know, another material, another material and so on. And it works just fine directly like this. It's no big deal. Um, just to be mindful that obviously this is rewrite, this is rewriting what you've done and you might have to wait for a while for this to compile. But other than that, everything is really smooth and works really well. But I really do hope you found that useful. Let me know if you have any other additional things to add to this. Maybe there is something that you know that I don't and it would be very valuable for the community and for me. Uh, please leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for all my patrons for supporting me and you know be on the lookout because the Surface Forge is about to launch very soon and it's actually an amazing project. You'll love painting your way around Unreal Engine and creating some really beautiful buildings and environments in general. So stay tuned.